Well guys, we officially made it to South Australia. We are in Streaky Bay, we are at the Drift Cafe, having some nice little yummy vegan treats. We've got arancini balls, dumplings, and obviously fries. Um, so we have done the big drive. We are now in South Australia, and we're gonna cruise around the South Australia coast. That was a big drive, wasn't it? What do you think? Very big drive, but we smashed it out in two and a half days. Yeah, two and a half days, not too bad. We didn't go straight to Adelaide. We thought we'd actually just come and enjoy the coast, catch some work. And yeah, the drive was hectic, but I'm glad it's over. just enjoyed a lovely lunch at Drift Cafe. It seems to be the main place here to eat. A lot of people recommended it and we agree it was very very yummy but as we were there we could see the jetty and we could see there was a safe netted area for swimming and there was a pontoon so it looked too good to resist and we grabbed our swimmers and we're gonna go and have a jump in. staying at Shuka Bay campsite we're at the Digger Day discovery site actually it's only 32 bucks a night and look at that it's so nice here right on the doorstep of the beach you can walk straight into the ocean it's very shallow though you can just kind of float um, not a proper swim but so good we are at the campsite here in Streaky Bay and this one here is located right on the beach the unpowered section you just pull up on the beach as long as you're above the high tide line you're good again so we have this view for 32 dollars a night or something stupid so at the shell service station here in streaky bay they have a replica of the biggest shark that was caught at the time in the world I think it's five and a half meters, weighs about one and a half ton, and it is very intimidating to be next to this. I couldn't imagine standing in the water or swimming in the water and have this bloody thing come up to you. Whoa. We're taking on the Westall Loop now. It's a beautiful little loop road just south of Streaky Bay, and uh, there's some nice beaches on here apparently, so we're gonna go take a look. First stop on this little loop is the granite and it is some, ooh, lots of flats. Uh, there's some rock pools down there. It looks a little bit like pictures I've seen of Bay of Fires in Tasmania. But yeah, that's cool. We're gonna go have an adventure down. They've got some wooden stairs here. Otherwise, it's a little bit slippy here in my flip flops. There's so many flies here. It is gross. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's really like, oh, makes you gasp a little. This place is so nice. It's sheltered, so it's a beautiful temperature here today. Um, I would definitely probably be going in the water, even though it's very cold, if I had my swimmers. The only problem is there's just so many of these little flies, it's really frustrating. You can't really just stay still, because after a few seconds they're all just crawling on you. But, it's beautiful. exiting the Westall Point loop but Corey has found these sand dunes and he wants to climb it and I think he's going to send the drone up. Blue 
your hair. Tie it up. Okay, we are at Murphy's Haystacks now after a little windy drive down some gravel roads. Um, pretty good gravel roads though, uh, considering some of the crazy ones we've been on in Northern WA and Northern Territory. But um, this place here is on private land. There is an entry fee uh, to get in and I think you can camp here as well for $10. Um, which would be a pretty cool place to, to camp. Um, but these Murphy's Haystacks are massive granite boulders and we're gonna go walk up and take a little look. Pretty cool, isn't it? Like a mini version of Wave Rock. Are you? Okay, so this is Venus Bay and on this side we have the open ocean, on the other side you have this beautiful, tranquil, flat, secluded, private, protected bay. And uh, that's Venus Bay. There's a caravan park here and a lot of like cliff walks and stuff. It's very beautiful, very epic and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Cave. I can't see a cave, but I guess we'll go continue further down. Maybe we'll find one. And there's also the Talia cave nearby. I'll we'll go to that one next. You look cold. I'm a bit chilly. <laughs> The watershed cave and the water here is actually super clear but I'm guessing it is just as cold as it was where we were earlier um, so we are not getting in We couldn't find Talia Caves. I'm not sure what happened there. It's on all the tourist maps. We saw it on um, Google Maps. There's no signs for it. There's nothing. We don't know if it used to be there and it's like the access is gone now. But looking at the photos on Google, the Woodshed Cave looked like the the pictures for Talia Caves look just like Woodshed Cave. I don't know. Is it the same spot? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to try and find that out. But hmm. We will update you. Yes. So no Talia Caves exploring today. Further south we go. We're on our way to Coffin Bay now and we've just had a truck go past which flicked up a stone and it's cracked our windscreen. Uh, yay! I don't know if you guys have been following us maybe on social media but uh, a few months ago when we were driving down to Perth in Geraldton we got broken into in the car and they smashed our side, this passenger window, scratched up our door and yeah so we had to deal with that and now we've got a smashed windscreen. Thankfully it's not completely you know smashed, we can still drive and I think our insurance has windscreen repair but who knows with insurance, we'll wait and see. Okay, quick update guys, we are driving up the Air Peninsula now, we're heading north towards Port Augusta. Um, we kind of skipped through Port Lincoln and Coffin Bay because one, we don't eat oysters, and two, the weather's a bit iffy, so I feel like you really need to stick around, uh, wait for some good weather there, because I've seen some beautiful pictures of Coffin Bay, but we just didn't have the weather for it. Um, and because we're on such a tight, uh, schedule now we're heading back to the Gold Coast because we are booking flights well we've already booked flights we're going to the UK uh, and we are going to hopefully go and explore Europe next um, but that means we need to get back to the Gold Coast and sell our car rooftop tent everything like that um, so yeah we basically just need to get on the road 
and we can't stick around and wait for the weather to clear up like we probably would if we had more time on our hands but anyway that is what we're doing we're going to be in Port Augusta in about two hours then on to Adelaide um, catch up on some stuff in Adelaide for a day or so and then carry on on the road through to Victoria. 